Calling it to order. Please rise for the flag salute. How? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adequate notice of this meeting yeah. has been provided pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law by posting a notice of this meeting on the bulletin board in the municipal building and by publication in the press of Atlantic City and the Star Ledger on January the 11th, 2021. Mr. Cheek? Here. Mr. Gishard? Present. Mrs. Link? Here. Mr. Patali? Here. Mayor Kane? Here. All right, next I'd ask you to join me um, for a moment of silence for private reflection, please. All right, we'll move on to guest presentations. This evening we have none. Uh, we do not have a late list, correct? Correct. And uh, Peter, we have anybody signed up for early public comment there? All right, Jack. <laughs> this is not the state of Virginia, this is the township of Hamilton. <laughs> uh, commenting on the item 3B, uh, the sidewalks and curbs, <laughs> one of my favorite subjects. Atlanta County Institute of Technology and the County Complex uh, on 18th Street. You know, the township has a, uh, a long history of favorably dealing with the county when they had educational needs and public safety needs. It goes all the way back to the 60s, where the community college when they started with. Then we did the jail. We were so happy to get the jail out of the center of town. You grew up with the jail, right? We got that jail out of town. Um, ACIT needed some, some property. We gave them for that. And the justice facility. All these are uh, enhancements to the township of Hamilton, which is essentially the county seat of the county, county maintain the county. Maintain those elements of uh, county use to make sure that we are still the county seat. Uh, <clears throat> I certainly do support the, uh, the sidewalking in the industrial part of these complexes. Uh, they're required to do these uh, when we start these facilities. And for some reason or another, uh, the county did not do that. So uh, this certainly will <coughs> enhance the, uh, the industrial park, uh, especially they have a new, a new street, Atlantic Avenue, which has been paved down in that area. Uh, the new recovery facility just below that, it, it was, Mm -hmm. They were wondering how they were going to put a sidewalk there. It was a beautiful sidewalk. Uh, so I certainly do support the, the Township Committee supporting the, uh, uh, the a resolution to go forward to the county to, to see what they would do. Uh, you might even consider <coughs> the Municipal Utilities Authority because they have property there also, especially along Badcock Road. We just did an agreement over there. And maybe through uh, Mr. Philippone, we can get in touch with the Motor Vehicle Agency for the state of New Jersey because they didn't do their sidewalking on 19th Street either. So <laughs> I certainly support your, uh, your effort to, uh, to do this. Thank you, Jack. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. All right, next uh, we'll move on to item three. Um, we'll start with A, best practices inventory. Peter, you want to give yeah. us a little background on this, please? Once a year, the municipality has to complete their best practices inventory. Uh, the finance officer makes up the preliminary answers, review them with the administrator, and then we submit it to the state. Uh, we're required to have a conversation with the township committee about uh, what was surveyed, uh, what deficiencies we have, there was approximately 25 questions of best practices, and core competencies, and except for one question, which I do with 
electric vehicle charging stations. We were able to answer the affirmative of all of them. Uh, the state has tied this to state aid. Uh, you have to score a 15 to make sure they don't take any state aid from you. We scored a 22 and a half. So a very large Christian. Most of the best practices was more of a survey for the state to gather information about what municipalities are doing. So uh, part of the practice is we have to uh, respond to the state to show that the matter was listed on the agenda. You received a copy of it and it was whatever amount of discussion you choose to have about the best practices inventory. It was part of the agenda with you tonight. All right, well, we don't have to take any formal action on this committee. You have any questions, uh, Mr. Miller? Or... No. All right, hearing none, we'll move on to item B. Um, Curb and sidewalks, Atlanta County Institute of Technology and Atlanta County Complex, Atlantic Avenue and 19th Street. Um, Mr. Cheek, you want to uh, fill us in on this? Yes, no problem. I've been in touch with the county commissioners of that area there. They're more than happy to look into the feasibility. Naturally, the Votech was constructed in the 70s. They're not sure if curbing would affect the drainage, the water drainage and whatnot but they're willing to have someone take a look at it to see if it is a feasible thing and to basically come up with ideas or whatever, if it can be done in the Atlanta County complex between the jail, the, the VOTEC, the old uh, special services down, mm -hmm. down the road, in that area right there. They have no problem with looking into it and seeing what can be done. Were they uh, originally... Um supposed to do uh, sidewalks there? What, in 1975, their, uh, when plans? that school opened, I was a junior at that school. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> have you looked into it? Uh, no, I have not. Okay, because uh, they they might be trying to fulfill what they really were supposed to do to begin with. Um, I don't see, when I've gone to the Atlanta County Institute of Technology, um, when they've had a camp there, all the people uh, go by the parking lot. I don't see anyone walking, you know, to that area via Atlantic, uh, Atlantic Avenue or the road that leads to the uh, um, inspection to station. the motor vehicle inspection. I'm I'm not really sure whether. That would be money well spent, but um, I, I would like to see continuous sidewalks all through Hamilton Township, uh, Maze Landing, well, before I, I, I'd see something like that. But that's my own opinion. This, this from what, the way I understand it, would not be Hamilton Township money. It would be Atlantic County money. Okay. And now you're talking Hamilton Township. That would be Hamilton Township money. <laughs> Yes, I, I'm just saying that I, I, I don't think it's a necessary thing. People are not going to be uh, walking to ACIT via the sidewalks, in my opinion. I mean, we do pay Atlantic, Atlantic County taxes. So uh, I'm saying that, uh, um, you know, if they want to do it, they feel as though it's necessary. I just don't really see the the actual use of that uh, really being practical. But I mean, we have sidewalks in Hamilton Township that seem to lead to nowhere. So, well, you said that with Jack in the room. What you said that with Jack in the room. <laughs> I remember the sidewalks that they put on Park Road, and it destroyed the drainage. And for years, we had huge puddles on Park Road and Tunney because we all decided, well, we're going to put, uh, we made the contract to put the uh, uh, sidewalks in. And the water that normally drained into the creek was draining into the street. And I, I, I don't know. Uh, who accepted the engineering of that, but they certainly did uh, have a problem and it took many, many years to come up with a solution to 
uh, take that uh, that water that would accumulate. You couldn't even drive through it and bubble it up to the creek up 13th. And, and that was a, a they, they put more catch basins in that area than I can count, and they didn't work. And finally, they were able to bubble the water up this street up 13th and then put it in to the uh, uh, the creek there. So I, I think they have to really check out the drainage because it is a difficult problem here in Hamilton Township as well as Atlanta County. All right, well, with this particular one, I mean, the, the question is whether or not we support them looking into it and finding out um, I, I, of course, they're going to have their engineers or whoever would do it, you know, do the study to find out if it will cause drainage issues. Um, but that would be on them. It would not be on us. And we would. So I guess if, if there are if there are any other questions regarding this. Are we going to have an input to this study? Uh, no, no. I mean, this is them doing it. If, if they all, all they want from us is. And Richard, correct me if I'm wrong, is whether or not we support them doing it if the funds are available. Yes, and, um, and it's practical to do, and it's feasible as far as drainage with curbing with the existing elevations. So we're not going to be party to what they receive in order to give them the green light on what, if they spend the money to do or not. That's how I think yes. they're, they're doing strictly county-owned property. They're looking into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Steve and I were out there, I guess a couple of months ago, and we talked about that area for the uh, school, Safe Route to Schools grant, but we decided to go with Farragut. Um, kind of feeling the same way. That's all county property. And it's and um, there is quite a lot of foot traffic by the jail because there's a school, there's a uh, bus stop there. And, uh, and there's, I don't believe there's a sidewalk there either. So I think that would be, it, it would help that area make it look a lot nicer. I mean, it would be nice, but you know, as long as it's the county doing it, that's, it's all the county's property. They're the ones who, uh, who built those buildings there and uh, decided not to put sidewalks and curb in whatever areas and, and whatnot. So any other questions, comments? Thank you, Paul. Um, Hearing none, I guess at this point, I, I mean, I'd entertain a motion to authorize a written request to the county to um, further look into it. A motion. A second. I have a motion and a second. Um, Rita, can we, you know what, uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Our ayes have it. Motion carries. Um, next, we have four public hearings, adoption of ordinances, which we have none. Five, introduction of ordinance. Uh, the public hearing to be held November 15th, 2021. We will take A, Ordinance 1972-2021. This is an ordinance amending uh, Chapter 203 of the Township Code entitled Land Use Development. Um, and it is regarding our sign ordinance is the update to the sign ordinance. Uh, we had a lot of discussion at the last uh, meeting. Um, committee, what's your pleasure? Um, I went through it, would have rather watched paint dry, but, mm -hmm. um, so I, I go through and I find one section on page nine, unlawful signs, neon signs, no new neon signs shall be permitted as of the date of the ordinance. What page is that? That's page nine. And then you go to page 11. And it says, type of illumination permitted. Neon and other gas type illumination is permitted. Uh, are they two different areas? Uh, unlawful signs. Uh, page nine under, what, what paragraph are you on, just so I can see? Unlawful, unlawful signs. Unlawful signs. E, or no, F. F, okay. Neon signs under unlawful. Okay, following the district shop. The following signs are prohibited in yep. all districts. I got you. Go ahead. And then you said eleven. And then go to page eleven. 
type of illumination permitted, number three, neon and other gas type illumination is permitted. Three, um, 11, what is the, oh, okay. <coughs> under type of G, illumination. G3. Three. Three. Well, the signs, I mean, can we be consistent? Well, the signs that we have uh, need requirements. Commercial and industrial there. And then, and then here it's the following signs are prohibited in all districts and shall not be erected. Signs without certificate or fee, then unlawful. You, uh, Deputy Mayor, I, I sat on this for a year and a half, and <laughs> as you can see, the amount of time that you took to read it, you, as what you said, I, I, I lived that for a year and a half. Um, and I do see there is a contradiction on that. Just want to get this, want to fix that. That's all. I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm, I think that's a minor enough change that we can move on with the correction noted, correct? Well, I would say that you introduce a time of public hearing, get the planning board to give you clarification as to is a neon sign permitted somewhere, such as commercial district and not elsewhere. And then I think it would be a minor amendment to either strike one or strike the other. I appreciate that. Any other um, corrections That's the only or ones that I, I'm not saying there might be other ones. I may have glazed over. Well, I, I would expect you to read it again this evening. <laughs> and then. <laughs> How's the it, it's, it's a little confusing because, for instance, like the beauty power that I go to, they have the moving neon sites, the, you know, signs or lights. Is that unlawful? Um, that is not neon. That you're talking about the changeable sign. Neon is the gas <coughs> backlit uh, tubular sign with the inert gases in it. Yeah, but uh, but, um, but um, what's his name has that uh, in the hair district or Main Street? No, no. It, it's the, um, the the restaurant right on fifty. But I, I can't think of Mario's. That. No, it's the one the Italian restaurant has neon all the way around. Oh, Frankie's. Joanne's. 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 Um, I do believe I read somewhere in here that if it's existing, it's grand. I think I read it. Well, yes, you did. It, it is. It would not. Just so you know, these changes would not be retro. It would be anyone coming in or applying for a new. So. Um, of uh, being with the planning board, I believe it was Buffalo Wild Wings. That's part of their corporate advertising nationwide. It's part of their identity. And they just apply for a variance. It's not like it's neon blinking to sell cars and all that. It's just part of their franchise. Yeah, you have something to sell cars? Or? <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, the, the sign ordinance before that said that anything that took your eye off of the of driving, you know, where it was blinking or it was whatever, whatever. Well, <laughs> how do you how do you regulate that? You don't. It's... Well, there are. I mean, when you <coughs> there are regulations against banners, streamers, changeable signs. There are, I mean, there, everything is regulated, um, but I, I don't really understand where you're going with the, with the with the question. I mean, everything is regulated. I mean, if you want to put banners up, you have to get a permit. If you want to put streamers up, if you want anything that's going to detract, uh, you have to get a permit for it. That's and some of that is addressed in here, for, and, but it's all from a sign related. Um, all right. Well, here's a question. Uh, how sure. about the one who um, advertises ju uh, junk? Uh, cars. He, he puts them up, up everywhere. Who who takes those down if that's not permitted? And then if there's a telephone number on there, they call them and they have so many days in order to correct. remove them. That's correct. That is a code enforcement issue. Um, and right now the state's doing a great job of taking down signs. So <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would think All that they would, they would want to go ahead and um, and remove those signs, but that, that is a code enforcement issue. You are absolutely correct. If you're putting a sign on the side of the road, which is not legal, as you know, that for the pandemic, we did allow off-site signage for existing businesses to help them through the pandemic. But they are supposed to have the 
uh, a contact name on it and the time period of which they are being put out um, so that they can be contacted. If not, they are in violation and they should just be removed and that would be a code enforcement issue. So how about the um, uh, the sign that advertises uh, basketball right there at Festival Mall? It's been there for a while. Uh, I would recommend that you reach out to code enforcement tomorrow, make them aware of it and ask them to have it removed. I just, you know, we have someone who goes, well, like the the state of New Jersey transportation is the one who took down all of our signs, political signs, whether they were really on uh, public property or not. So have we resolved that? Well, when you say we, um, who are you referring to? Uh, every Everyone signs the, uh, the Democrats, the Republicans. Well, I mean, uh, the, uh, has it been resolved? I, I, I don't know. We're not doing anything about resolving that. You know, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm confident that um, uh, the, the head of the Democratic Party, the same way the head of the Republican Party, has addressed the issue with those that are taking it down at the state. I would assume they have, but that that's not what we're discussing here this evening. I mean, that's um, that's a totally different different issue. As look, as Mr. Patali said, this is a very boring read. Um, it took. <laughs> A very considerable tough. amount of time. There's a lot of, and again, you know, to pick out. Um, well, I just remember when that young man had a guitar place and uh, in HPC, and he had his illuminated guitars on the far wall, and he was told he couldn't have them. I mean, they, they were neon, I believe. I don't know. You know, they, they were very nicely done. And, you know, is this consistent? It, it, it's a little confusing. I think I'll go put up a new new sign at our place, see well, what happens. You, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll go before the planning board. <laughs> I'm sorry? No, not, not right at this moment, Jim. Hold on one second. Okay. There'll, there'll be a public hearing on this on November 15th. Okay. I mean, this does go into the signs in a historic area, and, and I think everybody knows how I feel about well, that. HPC. <laughs> and, I, and, and I read through this, and I, and I look at it, and I, 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 I can't see how anybody who wants to try to start a business would want to do anything in the historic district. You know, your, 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 hand, your hands are tied, and you can't have signs, and you can't, you got to have this certain light, and um, in the, in the, in the, environment that we're in you need everything going for you and uh but that's i mean and all those things they, they can they can go to the hpc and, and request for uh you know for relief so that's that's the best that we can do i believe just i mean i understand i understand why they do what they do to, to some to some point but i think we have to evolve in some other areas and kind of uh move forward a little bit but it's uh this was undertaking at the planning board level because it had not been updated in so long. And, and, and the existing ordinance had technology that's no longer in use. Yep. And, and so we felt that if we were going to look at some of it, we should look at all of it and just redefine the standards. Anyone that disagrees with the standard obviously can come in for relief. And I know we're trying to streamline things and make it as easy for people as we possibly can. Um, but, and, but if there is something other than this that you want to do, you still can request relief. This is just, it's a blueprint to get us started. And, and, and there's a lot of things in here that, that are great. Like, you know, your, your lighting for your uh, parking lots has to stay on your property. It can't be going off into your neighbor's yard. And, and I think that's a, a very important thing that got squared away. Um, and along with a couple other items that I saw through here. But my big thing was just that the contradiction of the two with the neon lights, we got to get, get at least get that straight now. No, I agree, and uh, I think um, uh, if we motion this, we should uh, it should be motioned with Peter's comments and your comments so that it's corrected before we do the introduction. No, no, before adoption. Before adoption, thank you. Yes, we're introducing tonight. Any other questions or comments? I'll entertain a motion. 
I'll motion along with Peter and Carl's comments. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Rita, could I get a roll call, please? Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? No. Mr. Batali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. Four yes, one All right. no. <laughs> Next, we'll move on uh, to another interesting read, Ordinance 1973-2021. This is an ordinance amending Chapter 203 of the Township Code entitled Land Use Development, Landscape and Lighting Plan. Um, same thing as you uh, saw with the last. Um, it was an attempt to redefine some of the standards, uh, remove some outdated stuff, and add in what we're faced with at a planning board level um, on a monthly basis. Questions, comments? This is primarily for new development or? Right. Or <coughs> existing that may want to do an addition or, um, you know, add something to their existing. Or their grandfather? If you have an existing sign that would be out of compliance with this and it was previously approved, you would be grandfathered. Okay. <clears throat> this is landscaping and lighting, and I could tell you that all the plans that come through for approval as of now, they all give the kilowatts, you know, like Mr. Phillip, uh, and basically the direction of the lighting and how high the poles are and whatnot. So it's basically really reviewed already. We're just cleaning everything up, as the mayor said, just make, bringing everything up to date with the technology we have today. Rodney, how about the uh, the lights that uh, uh, light up your backyard? How yeah. does that apply? I live in Laureldale, and you hit the floodlights, and you put them on, and you look right out the backyard, you see nothing but woods. So. No, Rodney's backyard is illuminated all the time. That's already exist existed. This is for all new Well, how do you correct that? You don't correct it. That's existed. This is for all new. Well, unless you have a, um, you know, you file a complaint and you want to go before the planning board to correct it. Well, I guess. Well, we're getting off. We're getting a little off task here. Um, I, I, I want your question to be answered for Rodney. Rodney, the question was, have you, you have an issue with lighting in your backyard from <coughs> another source? I would assume knowing where you live, that the lighting is coming from this facility. Yes. <laughs> and have you made any inquiries to anyone at this facility regarding no, how we might be able to dim the light so they don't shine into your backyard? No, I haven't. All right. So let it be noted um, for those in the room. Um, could we look into the light pollution that is emanating from this building onto Mr. Gashard's property, please? We look at putting shields on the light. That's what I'm saying. The yeah, there's there's, there's a fix okay. for everything in this case. So if, you know, but it, with all due respect, it normally starts with an inquiry or a problem to be solved. So unless that inquiry is made like it's being made this evening, it can't be corrected. And I am not sure that it can be corrected, but there may be an option to to make it a little more pleasant in your backyard. And this, and this will actually address okay. that, that going forward. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. I have a motion by Deputy Mayor. Second. Uh, second by Mr. Gashard. Rita, could I get a roll call, please? Mr. Cheek. Yes. Mr. Gashard. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Patali. Yes. Mayor Kane. Yes. All yes and introduced. All right. Next, we'll move on to 5C. This is Ordinance 1974-2021, an ordinance amending Chapter 170 of the Township Code to provide for the assessment of fire prevention registration fees for agricultural structures in the Township of Hamilton County of Atlantic. Peter, would you give us a little bit of um, background on this, please? Yeah, back in 2019, the township adopted a fee schedule for us to inspect employee housing or agricultural properties. Uh, due to the pandemic and the timing of 2019, the first time an inspection was done was in 2021. And based upon a fee schedule, it would turn out to be a pretty hefty fee for the two large farms that we have that have migrant housing on their property. Uh, we're required under the fire code to make the annual inspection before occupancy of these housing units take place every season. And when the fee was calculated, uh, 
whoever calculated based it upon how many hours they thought they would spend out there. Uh, we haven't collected any money in 2021 because the both major farms objected to the, the amount. I had uh, our fire official do a survey of other farming communities to see what they charged and they were substantially less than us. So this ordinance is a reflection. I do have a discussion with uh, Mr. Glutter from Atlantic Blueberry about the numbers. And uh, he represented to me, him and the other major farmer are satisfied with these numbers for the ordinance as being introduced and I think they're reasonable. Yeah, prior uh, prior to 2019, they did not pay anything to um, Hamilton Township. But then the uh, um, the state passed it to, uh, to the municipalities to uh, make sure they inspect everything. And uh, so uh, they vehemently uh, objected to it. Uh, the, what was it, $6,000 was the assessment? Yes. So there was a back and forth and Mr. <coughs> Miller came up with a reasonable amount that the, you know, that both Galetta and McCree felt was reasonable. But of course, they never paid it before. So. Well, thank you for bringing it to uh, our attention, Ms. Link. And um, it sounds to me like at this point, um, all the parties are happy with it. It's just us now adopting this um, if we so see fit. So if there's no other questions or comments, um, committee, I'll entertain a motion. A motion. I'll second. second. I have a motion and a second. Rita, could I get a roll call, please? Mr. Chief? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. Well, yes, and introduced. All right. Next, we'll move on to six, award of bids, contracts, and change orders. First, we have A. This is a res resolution to award bid 2021-10, tree and stump removal and tree trimming to Rich Tree Service, Inc. of South Plainful Plainfield, New Jersey, for a period of 1-1-2022, 12-31-2022, amount not to exceed $10,000. Motion. I have a motion. Uh, Go ahead. comment on this. Sure. It's a little surprising that nobody from the area, I know we have a number of tree cutting services, but the idea that somebody can come down from North Jersey and outbid us on that seems strange. You're right. If you look at the responsible bidders that did, that did return, they're from one from Hamilton, um, Texas. South Plainfield, who was the, um, uh, and it looks like Wilming, uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. You're absolutely right. Um, uh, Mr. Minor correction, those are the ones who picked up bids. We only received one bid. You only received one bid. They're the ones yes. that actually picked up the packet. Okay. Uh, looking at the uh, charges uh, that they say for the different size trees, Sounds, uh, you know, reasonable. We had um, about six trees removed that were about 12 inches in diameter, and we paid about a thousand dollars for that. And the stump uh, included the stump removals, so it looks it looks very reasonable. I don't think we'll get to the ten thousand dollar mark, but uh, I think it would be reasonable. Hopefully we don't, right? All right, committee. Is there a motion on the board? You need a second. I'll second. second. I have a motion. I have a second. Read a roll call, please. Mr. Cheek. Yes. Mr. Bouchard. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Vitale. Yes. Mayor King. Yes. Yes, and Perry. All right, next we'll move on to 6B. This is resolution authorizing the purchase of road salt from the Atlanta County Co-op and authorizing the Director of Public Works to sign same total cost not to exceed $286,000. Um, something we do on an annual basis. Committee, questions or comments? 
Anybody know why Mid Atlantic was rejected? There was uh, they were missing things in the bid documents. I was told. Well, that sucks. <laughs> um, yeah, they were because they were the lowest bidder, right? Twenty bucks. Mid Atlantic. Twelve dollars a ton cheap. But they, they were rejected because delivery? they were missing something. Yes. So we have a bulk into it. Fort and Salt. Sorry. Um, committee? So moved. Sure. I have a motion, Mrs. Link, uh, second by Rodney. Roll call, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. All yes and carry. We will move on to C. This is a resolution <coughs> authorizing contract award for option year two of bid 2019-13 heating ventilation and air conditioning service to peterson service company medford new jersey for the period 1 1 2022 12 31 2022 not to exceed sixty thousand dollars committee questions comments motion so moved i have a motion so okay. And a second. Read a roll call, please. Mr. Cheek. Abstain. Mr. Gishard. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Vitale. Yes. Mayor Kane. Yes. Four yes, one abstention. Motion carries. Lastly, we have D. This is a resolution awarding contract for snow plowing service bid 2021-09 to Warner's Construction at Carver Township, New Jersey on an as-needed basis for period one or 11 one to 4 at a cost not to exceed $50,000. Committee? Well, I... Well, we got more bids, but... I know. But I understand that uh, the, uh, the other people with snowplows did not want to spend the extra money, the $10,000 to ensure their snow plows. So hence we didn't get too many bid, bids because wow. uh, in order for them, for a landscaper to take on that responsibility, they also have to have that <coughs> insurance. So. And the insurance was expensive, right? Yeah, very expensive. And then if they didn't have any snow to plow, they've already spent $10,000 to insure it, their, their vehicle. Well, when you do these things, it's always a gamble. Um, at the end of the day, um, if, if, if you win it and there's not a lot of snow, you make money. If you, if, you, if you don't and there's a lot of snow, you can lose some money. And unfortunately, insurance is a fact of life and the expense of not having it um, and what it could expose the township to would certainly um it's necessary so if there's a no other additional comments i'll entertain a motion so moved second a motion and a second roll call please mr cheek yes mr gishard yes. mrs link yes mr Vitali. yes mayor kane yes all yes and carried all right next we'll move on to the consent agenda we have no business registrations so we have the consent agenda b through d okay let's pull out Questions, comments, motion? I'll make a motion to move B through D. I have a second. I have a motion and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Uh, next, we'll move on to eight personnel. Uh, first, we have a resol resolution appointing Joseph Gaudo to the regular full time exempt position of township administrator at an annual salary of $146,000 effective November 15, 2021, and authorize the mayor and clerk to execute the employment agreement. This employment is subject and contingent upon successful completion of a criminal background check, employment, physical drug screening. So moved. I have um, a motion. Can we comment on the motion? Yes, you can. This is an interactive. Um, <coughs> uh, the um, committee has worked very hard interviewing, interviewing a number of candidates for this position. 
and um, it uh, was a, a very difficult position, a, a difficult decision. But I believe in this nomination, we have chosen the right person to fill the job. Appreciate those comments. Agreed. And if there's no additional comments, I'll entertain a motion. We have a motion. Yes, we'll second. 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 We have a motion and a second. Read a roll call, please. Mr. Chief? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. All yes and carried. All right. Next, we'll move on to B, resolution appointing, insert name here, to the regular <laughs> Sarah Duffy, um, to regular full-time exec position of human resource director at an annual salary of $55,000, effective November 1st, 2021. As we all know, we had the discussion, Mary Kelly is leaving us uh, uh, to retire and, and move on to the next chapter in her life, and this will be replacing her. Ms. So moved. I have a motion. Second. second. I have a second. Ms. Martina, can we get a roll call, please? Mr. Chi? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. All yes and carry. All right, next we'll move on to C. This is a resolution promoting Officer Christy Ware to the rank of Sergeant at a salary of $114,944, effective November 1st, 2021. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Vitale? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. All yes and carry. Uh, next, we have D, resolution promoting Officer Cheryl McCarthy to the rank of sergeant at a salary of $114,944, uh, effective 11 one So, so moved. moved. I have a motion and a second. Read it. Can I get a roll call, please? Mr. Cheek. Yes. Mr. Gishard. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Batali. Yes. Mayor Kane. Yes. All yes and carried. Great. Next, we'll move on to E. Resolution appointing Mustafa Marouf as a full-time police officer for the Hamilton Township Police Department at a salary of $46,882.65. Start date to be determined, contingent upon the successful completion of the background process. So moved. Second. I have a motion. Second. Roll call, please, Ms. Martino. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. All yes and carried. We'll move on to F. Resolution appointing Edward Ruiz as full-time police officer for the Hamilton Township Police Department at a salary of $46,882.65. Start date to be determined. Contingent upon the successful completion of the background process. So moved. Second. Motion second. Ms. Martina, roll call, please. Mr. Chi? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. All yes and carry. And lastly, for personnel, we <coughs> have G. This is a resolution appointing Aaron Crean as municipal housing liais liaison, effective 1019 of 21. So moved. Second. Motion, second. Read a roll call, please. Mr. Chi? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. All yes and carry. All right, we'll move on to nine. Approval of minutes. A, regular meeting minutes of October 4th, 2021. So moved. Motion? Second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion passes. B, minutes of executive session meeting minutes of October 4th, 2021. Moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Rita, can I get a roll call, please? Mr. Chi? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. All yes and carry. And next we have C. This is minutes, release of closed session minutes. So moved. I have a motion. Second. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Chi? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. All yes and carry. All right, next we'll move on to D, bills. The bill list total is $5,437,327.52. So moved. 
Motion. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Chief. Yes. Mr. Gishard. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Patali. Yes. Mayor King. Yes. All yes and carry. All right. We're going to move on to reports. Mr. Administrator. I just want to point out that I have our open space signs here for anybody in the Times Committee or the public would like to take home a few and share them with family or friends and have them posted. <coughs> I also would like to either have a member of the Times Committee or somebody gives me a contact to reach out to some of our youth groups since they are a beneficiary of the open space money for recreational improvements to, you know, to have them distribute signs to their organizations. So whether you guys want to volunteer to do that or pass the contact information off, I'd appreciate that. Um, all right. Can you give us the advantage of the open space for our community? Yes, uh, in a hundred words or less. Uh, <laughs> The Open Space Fund creates a dedicated trust where you're allowed to appropriate money from for acquisition, preservation, and development of property for recreational area, or permanent preservation, or historic purposes. It allows that money to be uh, appropriated on an annual basis for specific projects that you want to address. You can also use it to pay off debt service on projects. So for instance, if you chose to do a $1 million project, uh, we'll say in recreation, and you want to take $200,000 out of the open space fund and take a bond station note for the $800,000 and annually use open space money to pay off the bond anticipation note so you don't have to go to permanent financing, that's an option available. Uh, so it can be used in different combinations that way. It gives you the flexibility also to respond to uh, recreational needs. For instance, if an uh, example I have in town next door is that uh, a group of seniors came and they wanted a pickleball court built immediately. The township didn't have the capital budget and the recreation funds, but they were able to use open space money to convert an existing tennis court into a pickleball court in about 60 days. Uh, so money is available and it gives you that type of flexibility to do projects like that. Very good. I think it deserves all of our support, you know, throughout the Hamilton Township. I appreciate that, Mr. Link. Any other questions, Mr. Miller, regarding open space? Peter, thank you. You're welcome. All right, we'll move on to Mr. Solicitor. Nothing to report. Not going to impart us with your wisdom this evening? All right. Mr. Philip Yeah, Mayor and Committee, I have a few items. Uh, Lake Leonard P. Dam, I just want to report that our next uh, dam committee meeting is scheduled for Monday at 2 p.m. We'll get a full update on where we where the county stands with the dam and the powerhouse improvements. Um, New York Avenue, I have no further update on New York Avenue other than I, I'm, I'm hearing from the county that uh, early December is when the, the uh, bridge will be completed. I'm going to be with the county engineer tomorrow morning, so... I'll, I'll try to get a little more detail as to more of an act, exact date. Um, the 2021 road program, I have a, that's a, we're under contract with Arawak Paving Company. I have a pre-construction meeting tomorrow morning at 7:30, and this is for Grand Avenue, Harley, and South Avenue. So we're, we have a meeting on site at Grand Avenue, 7:30 tomorrow morning to kick off the pre-construction meeting. Um, Third Street is we have bid opening this Thursday morning for Third Street. Third Street is is the improvements of uh, from Lenape Avenue to just past Shaner School where, where the bridge is, the pedestrian bridge. We do have a lot of sidewalk replacement on that road. Um, it's a pretty substantial and detailed project. I've walked it a number of times with Brett. The deputy mayor walked it with me a few times. So we, we think we have a good detailed plan. Hope not to have any issues with any of the trees or, or any of the any issues out there. It's a very old street. We tried to address in detail all, all the old improvements that are out there. I think we have. So Thursday will be bid opening. I've had a good a, a number of contractors that have come and picked up sets of plans. So I'm expecting a, a good, uh, reasonable, fair, low, lower bid than what my projecting is, I hope. Um, Route 322. At the last committee meeting, Deputy Mayor asked me to take a look at 322. Um, I contacted Wade Smith and Brett, and we, we, a week and a half ago, we looked at 322. Um, 
the, I wrote a letter late last week and Vanessa Meads from the camp, from the state, responded last Friday. And, and we have a meeting scheduled for 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And if you've seen the emails, I think maybe the mayor and deputy mayor have seen them. There's a pretty big, large contingency of people that are expected to appear at that meeting. And this is what, what we pointed out in our letter is um, the, when the DOT hired South State, this is from Route 50 Bridge to, to <coughs> from the mall, um, you know, they, they milled the road. We've been hearing that they're not going to put the top course of asphalt until the spring because of all the utility conflicts they've run into at the intersections. So what our letter said to, to the state, and we're going to talk about it tomorrow, is we need line striping that's visible. The police department's having a lot of co concerns about at nighttime when it rains, you just can't see the lines. Um, the second thing, that intersection of Cologne Avenue is in just terrible condition. It's settled where they did the paving, the utility work and paving. So Cologne Avenue, where we're going to meet tomorrow morning, that's, that's in pretty poor condition. And the third thing um, is some of the businesses have suffered where their asphalt aprons, where there was milling in front of their asphalt aprons. Last spring, uh, South State and, and the state agreed to do some milling, but some of those driveways, I think there's some water laying in front of those driveways. So we're asking the state to come and take a look and uh, hire their contractor to do some extra milling or replace the aprons. I know the ones are pretty bad in front of Walmart, in front of Acme. So we're looking for relief there and we hope we get that tomorrow. So in speaking with Vanessa Meads, she seemed very receptive to the line striping and, and to the conditions out on Cologne Avenue. Um, the next two things I have that weren't in my report is uh, um, Aaron Crean last week really uh, helped us out. I prepared a grant application for safe routes to school. I think she started work Tuesday morning at eight o'clock. By 11 o'clock, I was on the phone with her. Some, someone from the municipality had to file our grant application. And, and in, in very short time, Erin was able to get into the SAGE site, get herself registered, and work with me on the application for safe, safe routes to schools. And that's the application for, for um, improvements to the intersection sidewalks from on Farragut Avenue from 9th to where it, it ties into the Shaner School, and then for two more blocks where it connects into St. Vincent the Falls. So that application was filed last Thursday. And uh, we've gotten a response. We made it in time and they've accepted the application. The All last right, item I have, P Peter brought to my attention, we have a grant application due, I think it's November 27th for what they call, it's an NJDOT local freight grant application. And I'm, I'm going to be meeting with uh, Peter Miller tomorrow morning to, to put together that application. Is that the one for Atlantic Avenue? Or that's already uh, it, Atlantic right? Avenue, and that, Avenue is in. Is in. That's in. Um, this is a, an application, and, and Peter probably has seen many more of these than I have. The last time the township w was successful was when Kevin Dixon was the engineer, and it was for the, um, in the industrial park when we paid a uh, on Boulevard in the industrial park. I think Peter has some ideas. Yeah. One of the things we have to demonstrate is that 25% of the traffic on the roadways we're applying for are heavy duty trucks. So if there's any roads left in industrial park that haven't been done, we can do them counts to determine if we meet that 25% threshold outside of industrial park. So if anybody has any suggestions where they know they see heavy duty trucks, you know, running on a regular basis, you know, on our roads and not on county and state highways, uh, I appreciate the insight. Thank you. Thank you. That was my report, Matt. All right. Fantastic, Steve. Thank you very much. I guess for Steve, um, sure. I know you had said privately to me, or talked about them possibly paving 322 this year and not next year. I just want to reiterate that uh, I hope they do that at night as opposed to the daytime like they did last year, especially coming on to the holiday seasons and uh, the, the total nightmare that that caused by paving in the daytime. Um, that really needs to get done at night. I, I, will, I hope, I hope I you can... I'll carry mention that to Vanessa tomorrow. Strongly recommend. And and uh, our police chief Greg Sambrone is going to be there also, so we could uh, clearly, you know, uh, get that message across to. Yes. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to township committee members. Thank you, Steve. Sure. Um, this is Link. <clears throat> 
Um, it was great to hear that the current developer of Woods Landing, the HOA and the Township Committee have all come together to have the community paved. This particular issue has been festering for at least all the years I've been on Township Committee due to a number of situations that have kept getting in the way of coming to a successful resolution. The adage, good things come to those that wait, gets pretty old, especially when it's the homeowners who have had to deal with the deteriorating roadways. But because of the teamwork and determination, the Township Committee, Administrator, Solicitor, Bob Cam, uh, Sandman, have been able to facilitate a positive result. Congratulations. We all look forward to the day that we can drive through the community on a new surface. All right. Thank you. Um, Happy Mayor. Um, first off, I want to congratulate um, our newly appointed sergeants, Sergeant Ware and Sergeant McCarthy. Um, they're great police officers, uh, known them for a long time, really happy to see them move up. Um, so congratulations to them. Congratulations to our new officers, uh, Maruf and Ruiz, and best of luck to them. And uh, congratulations to Sarah Duffy for her um, position with HR. Uh, welcome aboard. Um, I, did a, I helped out with a roadside cleanup with the green team uh, two weeks ago, last week. I can't remember when it was now. But uh, we cleaned up Landis Avenue and a couple of the side streets along there. What a mess. I think, uh, I think every high school student, every teenager should be forced to do this so that they can see <laughs> the mess that humans make. And maybe it'll make them think twice before they throw something out the window. Because it's, uh, it's absolutely it's amazing. There was somebody dumped, I mean, construction debris. I loaded up my own pickup truck with construction debris and didn't even put a dent in the pile that was there. Um, it's, uh, it's frustrating. It's sad. But, uh, thank goodness, uh, you know, there's always helpers out there that'll come out and, and we'll clean it up and we'll be back again in a few months to do it again. Um, wish we didn't have to, but we do. And then we had a very, uh, successful, um, recycling day with Public Works, as, as always, stop by there. Everybody was helpful, everybody was in a great mood. It was a, it was a nice day, a little windy, but it was a nice day and uh, saw a lot of people in there taking advantage of, of what we have to offer. It was very, very nice to see. Um, last week, I uh, logged on to a virtual meeting about the AC Bikeway, uh, continuing the bike path from where it ends in Mays Landing out there by ACIT, continuing it through our town, uh, probably out the Route 40 corridor um, into Richland, Buna, uh, and eventually connecting it with Camden's bikeway. Wow. And um, very interesting. Got um, John Federico from WSP, who's doing work on our dam. They're, doing, they're involved with this. Got him hooked up with uh, Steve Philippone because I know that we're looking at possibly paving Atlantic Avenue. And if there's anything we can do when that job comes out to help them with the bike path, I'd rather be proactive and jump on top of that and, and hopefully help them out if, if possible and uh, get that through town. Um, pushing hard to redo the bridge at the trussell. Have, yeah, the, I was waiting for have that over there, over top of there. And, and I made it very, abundantly clear that that area is used quite often by fishermen, by just wildlife people that go down there, people that just want to go out there and hang out. Um, I know it, it, sometimes it's a little shady down there, but I don't want that to be a reason why we don't try to do something like this. And I told them that we, we need to incorporate that with the bike path so that make an area down there where you can go fishing, where you can just sit down and have some benches down there to relax and, and enjoy the view because it is beautiful down there. It's very peaceful. It's nice. And, and, and uh, so, you know, I'll be on top of that and make sure that uh, we don't just make it a bike path. It's, it's open to, it's inclusive to, to everybody else that goes down there and uses that area. 
Um, so that's uh, that's going to be a heavy lift, but it sounds like it's it, it's it's on its way, and we'll definitely be going after federal funds, county funds, state funds, whatever to to help move this along. Um, one other thing we did yesterday, we had a uh, a 5K slash short walk, whatever you want to call it, for a local resident here, uh, Michelle Fye, who has a brain tumor, and it was for um, the National Brain Tumor Association. And uh, we used to do this walk up in Philly every year, but with the pandemic, it kind of came, it, it crashed down last year, and then this year, it's it's kind of virtual. So we did our own walk, and we did it out. At, unfortunately, we tried to figure out a way to do it here in town, but we just couldn't make that work. We did it out at Estelle Manor Park, and we had more than 150 people out there for that. It was an, it was an amazing local thing that got put together very quickly. And what I really wanted to point out was the different uh, sport teams at Ocrest that came out and volunteered their time to help out with giving out water, showing people where where their turns were for the run. Um, and it, it was very, it was a really nice feeling of uh, camaraderie with everybody. And it, and it went really, really well. It was a beautiful day. And I think it's going to be something that we're going to keep here in Mays Landing and not go up to Philly and just do it down here every year. And uh, hopefully it gets even bigger. So that was, uh, it was, it was a really nice thing to do. And uh, in case anybody's wondering, Michelle's health is, as steady as it goes and um so far so good it's been 10 years and and uh she's still here and she's she's an inspiration to everybody and uh that's really it for me reagan maddie miss you love you hope to see you soon great comments deputy mayor and i i feel sorry for the bike committee if you if and when you get the dam done because you're gonna have dam because you're gonna have a lot of time on your hands so take on that trestle i think i'm gonna have to actually go out and start riding my bike so maybe it'll <laughs> get me in shape that'll be a good thing all right rodney well, it was great to hear about the bike path something that's been talked about on and off for probably for decades but i'm a little disappointed to hear that we're not looking at the railroad uh the abandoned railroad tracks to go across the water there. Yeah, that's yeah. No, oh yeah, we are. That's what he's referring to. Oh, Absolutely. That we uh, we we know that as the trestle bridge. Okay. So oh yeah. Yeah. And even, even talk about I'm sorry, talk about the, the train station working that in as well. I don't know exactly how, great. but yeah. but it's very well known and it's there and, and work that in. That would be great. Yeah. Um I'm happy to hear that uh, our new hire, Aaron Cream, the uh, community development person, was such a, uh, a help. Jumped in on his, about the first day of employment and assisted with the grant writing for the uh, Safe Routes to School. She also has a very strong background in affordable housing. So we'll look forward to that. That's where I have. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Chief? Very short. October 30th is the Halloween parade. If you can't come out, have your neighbors come out and show, show our community the support that we have and uh, enjoy yourselves. And that's all I have. Fantastic. Um, well, a couple things. One, uh, Judy, I appreciate your comments on Woodlands, Woods Landing. I am going to single out, as you said, it's something that was talked about for a lot of years. But um, and as we started out this meeting talking about things, unless something's brought to our attention or unless uh, a committee member takes initiative the way Mr. Cheek did, that's how you get things done in Woods Landing. So it was a great outcome for all of them. Um, I, I, I support her comments with you, Mr. Sam, and thank you very much for the, the work that you put in making this happen. And, and hopefully the Woods Landing residents are going to end up with a very nice product out there in a very short period of time. So I appreciate it. I appreciate your comments. Um, I'm very happy to report that um, ahead of schedule, there is a truck in MISPA. So it's a wonderful thing. MISPA now has a fire truck back in the building um, and the renovations out there are ongoing. Um, we'll continue to update, but it's it's going to be a wonderful enhancement to the western side of town. Um, having that truck in there and then having the police substation and the public works um, facility 
is going to be great for the entire municipal community and the western part of uh, Hamilton Township. Um, I, I would like to say, first of all, I'd like to wish um, two of our existing committee members up here luck. Um, you know, November 2nd, of course, is Election Day. Um, please get out and voice your opinion, your vote. Um, early voting does begin in Hamilton Township uh, uh, or in uh, New Jersey as a whole, October 23rd, I believe. <coughs> yes. Um, and in Hamilton Township, you can vote at the um, Land County Library. Really? Um, there are, uh, I believe, five or six locations. Ms. Martina, five or six? Six. Six locations throughout the county. Um, at, in, in early voting, you can vote, uh, irregardless of where you live, you can vote at any one of those locations. Are they posted on our website? Yes. Uh, they are posted on the website. If you want to go to www.townshipofhamilton.com, um, those locations uh, will be um, listed on there. So I wish both of you gentlemen uh, very good luck. And with that... I will open it up to the public. Mr. Carrigan. You know, I want to say, uh, say about 5A, um, um, neon signs are not per permitted in, in historic district. Uh, that's why I wanted to uh, say a while back. Appreciate that, Jim. And also, Carl, uh, if the bike path links up with the Camden, uh, would, it be, would that be one, one uh, straight ride from here to Camden? Uh, I believe it goes all the way to Ben Franklin Bridge, I believe. Holy cow. Yes. Well, eventually Philadelphia then. Yes. And, and the train station here, here in town is looking on, on uh, Taylor Avenue. Yep. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, it would be a, a very nice uh, addition. How, how's that going to work? How's that what? How, how's that going to work? Um, I mean, right now it's just we're, we're, we're meeting with uh, it's called the AC Bikeway. Um, WSP, the engineers that are that are working on the dam are actually involved with this. So it's just really it's it's some people that are together trying to push this project forward. Um, and the last meeting that I attended, I I was the only local official. I mean, it goes through like I said, it goes through Richland, Buna. Um, it's going to sounds like it's going to make a right on Route 54, go up 54, and then somehow out 322. Oh, okay. So uh, Folsom. The bike path will be on the right right hand side of Route 40. Then. Uh, I don't think it's going to. They're talking about keeping it on the railroad track on the on the uh, on the railroad bed that's off of 40. Oh wow. Um, and that'll take it into Richland. I, there's all. It, it is a possibility that it could stay along Route 40. Also, it's it, there's a couple of of ideas on, on how to make that happen. So obviously there's, you know, it's, it's, it's got to study it and figure it out. Then there's, um, there's private land that you would have to buy. So that's, there's a lot, there's a, a lot of cogs that have to uh, connect. Anything else, Mr. Kerrigan? That's it. Thank you, Jim. And uh, I'll, I'll see all, all of you as uh, Wednesday night. Thank you, Jim. Sorry. What's happening? Is there anyone? I'm sorry. What's happening Wednesday night? Uh, Wednesday is a um, function locally. <laughs> <laughs> a question for Mr. Philip. You're talking about the uh, construct road construction on 322. Well, now, at, at uh, <clears throat> 322, go about 200 yards north on Cologne Avenue between gl the glades. On 322, <clears throat> on the west side, a contractor opened up the road where the little stream goes through there and left a about an inch to two inch depression in the street itself. It's a real tire thumper. I was going to call the engineer's office, but I called the engineer's office. They're not going to even talk to me. If you talk to them, maybe you can get them to get that contractor back to fix that road or the county fix it themselves. It's a real nasty bump. The, the, the oh, meeting Leipzig. that is occurring at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning with the DOT um, is also attending that meeting. The county and John Peterson's attending, the county engineer's attending. Go get them. Amy Gatto's been invited to that meeting. It, it, there were 
those photo, there were photographs taken by the county that have been circulating around since Friday, and it's exactly what you're asking for, you know, re repairs, um, and and that poorly, you know, patch that they make comes all the way through the intersection of 322. So it's almost like it's like you put a manhole there for some reason. It's it's. There's a manhole there, and it's all settled. Where they did the joint cut, that's all. That's all settled, like you said, about two inches. So, that's we're we're on it, and I think they're going to take care of that. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else in the public that wishes to speak? I'll entertain a motion. Move to close public public comment. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Public portion is closed. And we have no executive session, correct? All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a motion. Second. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting adjourned. Thank you. <coughs>